Mr. Petr Svoboda from Unicorn. Okay, um, thank you. So uh, let me talk uh, about uh, the challenges uh, when thinking and creating the next generation of tools for certificates issuing and trading. But let me start uh, with some uh, introduction to green certificates. Uh, you have heard already the basics uh, from the uh, previous uh, presentation by Mr. Clausen. But let me try to put it into the bit different perspective, mostly from the uh, IT uh, provider. So as you know, the renewable energy sources like the solar, wind, or water power plants are producing the power it's delivered to some power grid and consumed by the customers. But there is the uh, same grid used uh, to deliver also the power produced by <coughs> the traditional uh, power stations. So it is mixed and the customers cannot, cannot um, distinguish what energy they are actually consuming. Therefore, we have these energy attribute certificates, which are um, clearly defining uh, what was the source of, of the energy. Uh, let me uh, give you the example. So let's say if there was 50 megawatt hours produced by the renewable sources and 50 by the traditional power, uh, power plants, then in total, there was 100 uh, megawatt hours consumed by the customers. Uh, but the one who decided to buy the um, energy attributes uh, can then uh, declare uh, that the energy produced by the renewable sources was produced by the was consumed by them, and. Uh, Therefore, by definition, the energy attribute certificates is some electronic document which is transferable, tradable, can change the owners and provides the proof of source of one megawatt hour of the energy produced and adds these other attributes like what technology the power plant was, what was its location, the size of the power plant, etc. Um, one could argue that you could go directly uh, and buy the power uh, from the source. But I think that uh, by doing so, you are basically bypassing um, and losing all the uh, benefits which are uh, provided to all the customers by this um, price coupled uh, energy uh, spot market in Europe. So I think that this uh, market with just the attribute certificates and attribute certificates uh, on top of the energy market, um, I'm persuaded that it really makes sense and gives the right incentives to the producers uh, of the renewable sources. Um, okay, so how are actually these certificates handled? Uh, they are handled in the tools uh, which are uh, called uh, registries uh, and registry is the IT tool which is operated by the issuing body. So the um, nominated organization uh, in given country used by the account holders, meaning the users uh, which have something to do with the certificates. And the registry um, basically starts with registering the production devices so we know uh, whether the uh, power plant uh, can uh, get the certificates and uh, we know all the attributes uh, which are then on the certificates, like location and technology. Then there is uh, uh, produc production uh, measured, uh, metered for given power plants and the certificates issued. The certificates can change the owners, so can be transferred either within the registry or as uh, we have just heard also uh, internationally uh, through the AIB app. And at the end, the certificates are cancelled, which means that some end customer declares that the uh, energy was consumed. So it's cancelled for some end beneficiary, some end customer. 
Uh, it means that we really need to have an IT solution uh, to provide reliable guarantees of origin, so our system for guarantees of origin. Uh, let me have a look on uh, what's the current situation with the uh, registries uh, in Europe and certificates in general. Uh, first, uh, most of the uh, energy which is certified, it's uh, from it's for electricity. Yes, there are some other energy carriers coming, like the gas, which you already mentioned, but most uh, of the uh, certificates are now for electricity. But it's that uh, mostly in most of the countries, the production period on the certificates is one month. And that creates this issue with being able to declare the consumption of the customer for a particular day or even for an hour. Um, you can really imagine here like 100 megawatt hours of energy produced uh, from the uh, uh, photovoltaic uh, power plant really cannot cover the consumption of the uh, customer. Uh, over the night, uh, because obviously there is a dark in the night and the power, uh, photovoltaic power plants do not produce anything. And a uh, third point I'd like to mention in here, as I said, it's uh, all about IT, but most of the registries in Europe are quite uh, obsolete um, legacy tools which do not provide any modern APIs. Uh, they are not providing um, nice um, uh, graphical user interface or screens which would be user friendly. Um, and usually uh, they provide quite a poor performance. Um, so for uh, a lot of these uh, registries to have the monthly production period, it's actually a must and would be difficult for them to go uh, for shorter uh, periods. Uh, but it's not a static situation. Um, you know, there is a lot uh, going on, uh, not only now, but in a very near future. Uh, just to name a few uh, trends which uh, I see. So first one is obvious. So the share of energy produced from renewable sources, it's, it's increasing. And there are even some EU goals uh, of uh, how many percent should each uh, country in Europe achieve. Um, meaning, of course, when there is more uh, renewable energy produced, then uh, there will be probably more certificates to handle. In addition to that, as I mentioned already, uh, not only the electricity, because electricity is just one type of energy carrier but uh, we have other um, energy carriers uh, used for heating, cooling, transportation, uh, but also uh, to produce energy uh, at the end. Uh, and that might be the uh, biomethane uh, or the green hydrogen uh, or the heating cooling, meaning all those energy carriers when they are created from uh, the renewable sources. Uh, another uh, aspect here is that um, some countries have already uh, switched to so-called full disclosure, uh, meaning that every megawatt hour produced in a given country uh, is certified and can be easily used to, uh, then uh, when I have everything uh, certified, then it's easy to use that uh, information, the data, uh, really to declare uh, what is um, the uh, consumption in the country uh, by every uh, possible source and to also to declare these uh, um, goals given uh, by the European Union. Uh, very interesting, very important topic, as I mentioned, having the monthly uh, certificates, uh, monthly production period on the certificates really does not give the right signal to the, to the market. So to go to shorter periods, it's definitely a must. Uh, the journalists are usually <laughs> referring to this like a greenwashing when you simply 
are trying to declare 100% uh, covered by the green energy. But uh, if you look on these individual hours, uh, then uh, it's not true. So to have support for this in the certificates, uh, it's definitely a must uh, uh, for the near future. Another very interesting topic, uh, it's uh, to be able uh, to store the energy and use it in the moment uh, when uh, it is needed. Like there are certain hours or days when there is excess of the wind energy, uh, which cannot be used in that moment, so it makes sense to, to store it. And of course, the first obvious uh, way is to use some battery storages. But another promising technology, in my opinion, is to do some carry conversion and store the uh, energy, uh, the cheap energy produced in given moment, the gas like the heater in hydrogen, which can be either used uh, for uh, transportation or uh, can be converted uh, later on to uh, again to the power. And the certificates should support this, should be able to track this, because only in this reliable way, which they provide us, uh, you can really be sure that the uh, hydrogen was produced uh, from the renewable sources and not uh, from some fossil fuels, for instance. Uh, other types of certificates, or I would rather say even uh, different use cases for the certificates, I think it's another interesting thing. So in the moment I have uh, the declaration or the certificates for the renewable biomethane or renewable uh, electricity, then those certificates could be in a way used uh, to declare also uh, the reductions of the carbon emissions uh, by a uh, given uh, recipient or end customer. Uh, last but not least, also when we have the certificates, then of course with spreading of the uh, electric cars or cars uh, using uh, other ways of renewable uh, sources uh, uh, as they uh, fuel, then it makes sense again to use uh, some tracking uh, system, some certificates to be able to declare uh, fulfillment of that, of that goals. Um, uh, all those um, um, will lead to the huge increase of volumes and the current registries um, are uh, usually not able to cope with this. So uh, we have a solution for uh, which solves all this issue. Uh, it's a uh, strategy, uh, our uh, tool uh, representing a new generation of the certificate registries. Uh, so it is a tool for issuing and tracking of energy certificates in uh, multiple schemes meaning by design has been prepared to be able to handle um, the electricity or gas, uh, the European um, standard or the US standard, uh, or to be able uh, to uh, be adapted to any national specifics. And it covers the whole certificate life cycle, as I explained. So from the registration of a production devices measurement, up to the issuing, up to the cancelling of the certificates. So it's uh, focused on the uh, national uh, certificate registry operators, the issuing bodies. And we focus a lot on to provide a really nice uh, user interface, user experience to make the tool easy uh, for use. What's the background? Um, the tool was created in cooperation with Statnet. Uh, Statnet is the Norwegian uh, transmission system operator and the nominated uh, issuing body. Uh, actually, the Norwegian registry, uh, it's the largest in Europe, uh, issuing around 20% of all uh, certificates uh, in Europe. Uh, so it's uh, really uh, big registry uh, with a lot of uh, transactions or transfer happening in there. Uh, we do further develop a strategy according to the market standards. Uh, we are really looking forward now for the upcoming uh, CN uh, six, uh, 16, 3 to 5 
uh, and Unicorn as an organization adds the member of Direx International, which is the non-for-profit uh, organization and uh, where uh, all the users of the certificates are gathered to promote the usage uh, of, the, of the certificates. Uh, when we were designing Certigy, there were like six key aspects uh, we had uh, on mind, uh, and uh, those are really to provide really good user experience, to, to make the tool user friendly and flexible in a way that the user can find uh, exactly what he's searching for, and uh, he can uh, not adapt his behavior, but adapt the screen in the way uh, he wants to use it. Uh, I will show you in a minute uh, some live demo, so uh, you will see what I mean by, by the flexibility. So, uh, support for multiple certificate schemes and mostly also the possibility to be adapted uh, for the future changes or the national specifics. That was another important aspect. The performance and scalability. So, uh, because we knew already what is uh, coming, uh, what are these uh, uh, future uh, uh, aspects or what's going on on the market and to be able to provide not only the sufficient performance right now, but be also able to scale up uh, the performance with all these uh, new schemes or all the certificates uh, which are coming. Security, another very important aspect because the certificates are actually a financial security. So uh, there is some financial volume in the certificate, so it must be really handled uh, with care and be, uh, be secure. Uh, fifth aspect was to uh, use the architecture, which is modern microservice uh, based and which provides the APIs, which are easy to use for all the features, so enable uh, easy extension of new features or also easy uh, integration uh, of the system uh, of the users, if they want to. And of course, as every uh, modern system nowadays, uh, we deliver it uh, as a service in, in cloud. Let me show you now some live uh, demo. Okay, so here I have um, some strategy demo. Um, after the login, uh, as a user, I can see some um, important information like the latest news, some stats, uh, statistics from the past. But let me start from this screen uh, because you can really think about the certificate registry as being an internet banking for your certificates. So the first thing what I do as a user, I go to the accounts and I can see that I have two accounts. Uh, first one, it's some default accounts. Here is some account number. It's a public account, so the others can send me the certificates. I can send the certificates from the account. I'm contrary to what is common in the bank. Here I, am, uh, I can create additional accounts. Uh, for instance, uh, to do some other categories, so to sort out the, the certificates uh, I have. So, for instance, I can have an account just for my uh, private use where I uh, put all the photovoltaic based certificates. Uh, so, this is the amount, uh, number of certificates which is on this default account. If I click on that number, then I'm navigated to the first view, which is some aggregation. And I can see that I have certificates from 10 different power plants on my account. So I have uh, 10,000 certificates from this power plant, which is some uh, pumped storage. I have some certificates from some wave uh, onshore uh, device. Um, I have here some wind uh, certificates and I can go further. And this is actually the lowest level uh, where you can get. And this is really the certificate or better to say bundle of certificates. So there were 100 megawatt hours produced by this wind power plant. 
uh, somewhere in June 2020. And first, flexibility given in here, it's in the way that there are the, like tens of different attributes which are kept on the certificates. And I'm, I'm not necessarily interested into seeing all of them, but for instance, now I'd like to see from which country this PD was. And those are some, this is some Norwegian, um, Norwegian uh, production device. Okay, so this is how I can see the certificates and now some basic operations uh, with them. So first uh, one, uh, it's uh, for instance, doing the transfer. So I just decided that I will send to somebody these 70 certificates and I just initiate the transfer and the transfer can be either within Norway. So I have here uh, the other uh, organizations participating in, in this uh, example of Norwegian registry or I can choose another country and in this case the transaction would be passed through the AIB hub. So it's invisible in, in the background, but I can do this international transfer. So let's stay now with the um, uh, with the Norwegian example and just by um, selecting the recipient and the account, I can just uh, here uh, review what I'm doing. So sending 70 pieces and confirm the transaction. Okay, so um, there are plenty of other features, uh, but let me show you just two more. Uh, here I can see in the list of transaction, the latest transfer I made, and I can again navigate to see the detail of the transaction. Uh, so we have some certificates, uh, we can transfer them, and at the end, um, the life cycle of the certificates ends with the cancellation. Uh, so let's try, for instance, this way to navigate in this way. So I will search for some wind certificates. Um, so I can decide that this bundle, this volume, has been used by some customer, and the customer. Uh, it's, it's me, and because I'm the end customer, so by doing this, I am declaring, or the account holder on my behalf is declaring that there were 100, uh, sorry, 10 megawatt hours consumed by this customer in uh, May 2021. So after the confirmation, um, again, the transaction is done and the customer uh, can uh, receive the cancellation statement. Uh, okay, so I think that's uh, enough for now from uh, the live demonstration. And let's go back to the presentation because there's one more thing I wanted to share with you. And uh, because I called it um, presentation like tools for issuing and trading, I, and I didn't mention the trading uh, too much so far. So uh, we have just decided to use the experience we've got from creating the certificate registry. To, and we started to create a tool called Certificate uh, Certificate Trader, uh, which is meant really for those who are managing some portfolio certificates and have some end customers. So that tool uh, shall be able to give them the possibility to monitor uh, their position, do the matching of the buy sell trades, uh, providing the features to be integrated with the, their local uh, ETRM solution if they have any with the national registries, and all that based on the hourly uh, certificates. Uh, okay, so if we are, um, interested in knowing more, please visit the strategy.net uh, um, or contact uh, us and uh, we can provide you with uh, 
personalized demonstration or provide you with more information. And thank you for your attention. Thank you for presentation. You. So we have seen the first example how the IT can help uh, this energy market. So there will be discussion, I hope. So uh, I can ask my colleague yeah. again. Peter, thank you for your presentation. Uh, you have mentioned, uh, or there was a emphasis actually on a good user experience and flexibility and APIs, and things like that. Uh, the user uh, user friendliness or user experience uh, might surprise probably some people in, in audience because uh, as we heard also in the previous presentation of Ivar, uh, it, it, these issuing bodies registries, it seems like uh, a B2B systems where you wouldn't necessarily uh, expect something like a high user experience uh, requirements. Uh, could you comment on, on that? Why is that so important? Uh, you are right that in some countries, uh, DOCs are a more uh, B2B system, as you say, but it doesn't mean that those hundreds of uh, account holders actually working with the system uh, should uh, be provided with some board solution uh, because, you know, the uh, nicer uh, behavior of the system, the better usage, the, the more often they are using it, the less questions they have uh, to the issuing bodies. So even for this particular use case, it makes sense to have a nice system. Uh, but in some other countries, uh, there are actually uh, some really end customers, like the owners of some small uh, PV installations uh, on their roof. Uh, they are still those kind of users which can access uh, the system and see whether the certificates were issued for them. I think um, Sweden is an example of such a country. And meaning then we have really the public users, I would say, in thousands, which are uh, also using the system and that should be really, really user friendly for them. As for the API, uh, uh, you know, uh, all the modern systems uh, are uh, really offering APIs because you can really easily extend either the, the features of the system just by using the API of its microservices or the end users, uh, meaning here the account holders can easily integrate to the registry and automate some daily tasks they are doing uh, in the registry. Okay, I understand. Actually, we are with your part of your answers, we are coming back a little bit to uh, uh, one of the uh, questions uh, from the audience to Ivar, where there was a question whether uh, what he thinks might think about uh, including uh, physical persons into into uh, geo systems market, let's say. So as you said, uh, probably for the audience, the Sweden is already an example of uh, of a country where uh, it is it is possible, and uh, I would say, and normal people uh, are part of of this geo system. So th that was just a clarification, probably. Uh, OK, I have uh, two more questions to you. Uh, uh, Ivar and also you mentioned that uh, together with things like uh, full disclosure, uh, different schemes coming, uh, I mean, also the time granularity for the certificates, everything will be faster, everything will be uh, more demanding on the data uh, volumes. Uh, Ivar said that uh, there will be several times higher uh, amounts of data probably. Uh, we might consider even tenfold or even more fold uh, amount of data, I think. Um, what is the, the mechanism or what, what is the architectural uh, measure that uh, such a registry that you have presented have to, have to bear inside? Uh, you are absolutely right that all those uh, things will put a higher pressure on, on the registries. For instance, uh, just this example of coming from the monthly uh, production period to the hourly uh, production period, uh, you know, means 720 times uh, more, uh, more certificates. So that can be already uh, really a high pressure on some uh, old system. Here we are really in a good position that uh, the this delivery 
in in Norway. Uh, Norway is really an exception in, in Europe. Uh, there are already daily certificates issued. So coming from the daily to hourly means just 24 times more data. Um, of course, it might be a challenge, but uh, with this uh, new solution, uh, it's a that it represents. Uh, we are able uh, to handle it, and actually, we are also proving it in some uh, demonstration project. Uh, we are just uh, running in the Energy Tech Initiative, uh, where together with uh, Statnet, Statcraft, uh, we are uh, proving that this uh, hourly certificates are feasible. Yeah, that is right. We will hear a little bit more about it in the next presentation. That's true. Um, one last question. Uh, you, you know that uh, the topic of blockchains actually are, it's a big buzzwords on the mm -hmm. conferences. I'd like to, to make an advantage uh, here to ask you about that because the geos, the certification, the registries business actually sometimes are, uh, let's say, uh, a topic for these blockchains uh, ideas. Uh, any opinion on that, how blockchain would or could or could not actually help this energy tagging or certification agenda? Uh, yeah, you are absolutely right that the blockchain is a very interesting topic in, in energy domain in general. And there are very interesting uh, use cases. Uh, where it can be used for some uh, community um, sharing or community trading or exchange of some um, tokens representing, for instance, the energy produced by some small um, rooftop um, PV installations. Uh, I'm afraid that for this um, certificate business in the scale how currently the EX is working, uh, there would be a lot of challenges on using the blockchain or switching to the blockchain to be able really to handle all the trust which is now in the issuing bodies and the registries and the way how the data exchange is performed. Um, so I don't say it would not be impossible, but just the transition and ensuring all the trust or the mechanisms uh, which are currently there, uh, which make really the EX system in Europe so, so robust and so trustworthy, that would be really a challenge uh, for, for the uh, blockchain technology. I see. Okay, thank you very much for your answers. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. And I think we can move to, to, to another one. To another thank one. you very much. Thank you very much. Have a nice day, Peter. Yeah.